Joining us now, Nancy Tengler, CEO and Chief Investment Officer at Laffler Tengler Investments. Nancy, welcome. Good to have you with us. Well, we tested those June lows. We really went through them. Do you think we do it again? Well, I was wrong last time, Tyler. I, I thought we were starting to see the evidence that inflation had peaked. And, and I actually think we did see that. Um, and, and that scared the Fed. And so they came out tougher than ever. Uh, this this uh, narrative that we keep hearing is uh, Mary Daly today saying, you know, again, that, that they are going to stick with it and uh, continue to raise rates. I, I'm not arguing that they shouldn't. I just think it's a question of pace. And that's what the market is terrified of, that just as they waited too long in the past, now they're going too quickly and not letting the, the data come through. So, yeah. You know, uh, one, one of the uh, analysts that we speak to um, uh, repeatedly on Fed days said his worry was that the Fed was going to start too late, hang on too long, and go too far. It feels <laughs> like an awful lot of people feel that way, that they started too late, that they may raise too much and stay there too long. I think that's right, Tyler. I just uh, penned a piece for our clients called Monetary Policy in the Rear View. And that, that's what we have. We have a group of individuals that are, that are looking at data after it's already come out and not anticipating which direction we're moving in. So that would be um, a coincident or consistent with what, what your uh, other analyst has said, which is they are going to go too long and too hard, and that's the fear. And so yeah. to that end, I think we could easily retest the load. So there are, you know, we can look at data, and the Fed looks at data, and some things uh, indicate that, that some of the things the Fed would like to see are beginning to maybe take hold uh, in other areas. The data aren't quite so definitive uh, and so forth. But one of the things that's interesting is that you say that CapEx in technology and in robotics spending is something to watch and that that may be one of the drivers or the balloons that lifts the market out of this morass. I hope that's true. I think we're going to learn very quickly when we see third quarter earnings um, from from the tech companies, particularly the cloud providers, and that's one of my names, ServiceNow, and then cybersecurity, which uh, CIOs have said is their top spending priority. Mm -hmm. Palo Alto Networks is how we've played that. Uh, because I think once all this sort of fear over tightening sort of subsides, then we're going to turn our attention to growth, and we're going to be in a slowing growth or slower growth environment than we are now, although the Atlanta Fed GDP now just came out at 2.6% for the third quarter. Mm -hmm. um, so that doesn't sound like a recession. And of course, we got the ISM services, and that doesn't sound like a recession. But, you know, there's other places where we're seeing indications uh, that we're in a recession. So uh, some of the job openings numbers are, are, are right. declining. You're starting to see maybe a little bit there. You mentioned ServiceNow and Palo Alto uh, Networks. I get those, too. How does CVS Health wedge its way into that list? <laughs> so we are kind of um, barbelling our portfolios uh, with dividend growers. I mean, we, I've always invested in dividend growth strategies since the mid-1980s. So that's not new for us. But CVS is a, is a reliable dividend grower. Uh, it's, it's in a safer part of um, re a more reliable growth area, healthcare, And then EOG Resources, which is my other name, is one that has pay, is paying a $3 regular divvy. And in the last year, they've paid $5.80 in uh, special dividends. And we still think the story has a long way to go in traditional energy. And the majority, 95% of their reserves are in the U.S. So there, there's a lot to like about the stock. And it's down from its high.